try to put everything on God's responsibility. And I listened to Mr. Roti's Sunday school today. I think what I've learned is that the church has to act. Say act. She can't sit still in this hour. She has to be proactive. She has to speak up. She has to use her authority. Say use my authority. Come on, y'all say use my authority. Use my authority. And so it's so important to understand that this is the hour we're in. And to the degree you use your gifts is how things advance. And I was very tickled to watch Mr. Rowe teach Sunday school. I just, I just thought it was pretty cool to watch her teach. She's just herself, amen, Ms. Rowe, you know, and just watching her teach is just an, it's an amazing gift to watch folks be themselves and teach, right? She don't have to hoop and holler, amen. You don't have to scream at crazy like Pastor Mike, amen, just, just herself, amen. And so we just give God honor, amen. Let's, let's get our prayer in. Lord God, we thank you for the word today. Thank you for Church of Love. Thank you for my family. Thank you for all that you gather. We thank you for word to teach and transform your people. We lift the pastor of God Jr. to you. Amen. Strengthen him. Keep him, including his mom and his sisters and all that concern the God's legacy. Thank you for them. And thank you for this church of love family, this building, and all the things you're doing in our midst. Amen. We are one body, one body of Christ. Amen. And thank God for the leadership and the members in Jesus' name. So let's say amen. 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 And amen. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, you have a story where uh, David is going to confront an uncircumcised Philistine, which we call Goliath. When you look at the story, David never calls him Goliath. Never. David only calls him an uncircumcised Philistine. The term uncircumcised means he has no contract with God. He don't know God. He think he God, but he ain't nothing. Amen? Amen. Amen. You used to have this thing before called the five percenters. Amen? Uh, I call them the no percenters. Amen, somebody? Because anyone that's disconnected from God is actually walking death. And amen, somebody? And even though, uh, according to Jewish training, uh, Goliath was about nine feet, five inches tall. His shield weighed about 400 pounds, had a large helmet. He was real big on the outside, but was a punk on the inside. Somebody say amen. And so David was able to look past the outside exterior and look in his heart and know that he could be defeated. But let me tell you the difference between David and his brothers. His brothers were chasing, was chasing positions while David was chasing presence. And when you chase God's presence, it gives you more power than the position. You ever met people who try to do anything to get a position? And, and when they finally get it, it was like it was no big deal after a while. Amen? Because what you want to do is chase his presence. Because once you chase God's presence, you get the position. Amen, somebody? And so when I look at David, it kind of reminds me of us in the body of Christ. He was a shepherd boy. Someone say shepherd boy. He wasn't even allowed to come to the party. Amen? When they was asking the new king, they invited all the brothers. And they left him outside. Picking up sheep doo-doo. Amen, somebody. I'm just making it plain to you. Amen. He didn't have any army uniform on. He didn't have any church collar, church collar choir robes. He was just outside taking care of sheep dung. Amen. And when the prophet came in town, I'm coming to anoint the next king. They was, he took the horn of oil and went over his three oldest brothers. His older brother probably thought he was going to be the next one in charge. He had his hand like this. And the oil went over and said, no, you're not the one. Amen. Went to the second oldest brother. The oil didn't break out. He said, no, you're not the one. Went to the third oldest brother. And the oil did not burst. So the prophet knew that the God that was supposed to be the next king was not in the room. And the God says, man judges by the outside, but God charges by what? The heart. Amen. That's why sometimes you can mess up on the outside, but God will look at your heart and still bless you. Amen, somebody. Come on. We, we all mess up in this room. Come on, say amen, somebody. But God looks at the what? At the heart of the matter. That's why he that forgives gets an extra kudos with God. Amen, somebody. Because as one has been forgiven, you forgive what? Others. So it's so important to understand that. So David about 15, 16 years old, outside taking his father's sheep. And keep this in mind, David really had about three fathers. Yes. He had Jesse, his birth father, which was the child he had on the chick on the side. Amen, somebody? Yes. That's true. Amen. Yes. And number two, also King Saul was a spiritual father. It was like his covering. But also God the father was his father. So he had three different fathers working on David. That means your father determines your destiny. And this is wrong with Patterson. We don't have any fathers. And a lot of black men are in jail. And that's why women have found attraction to each other. Because the father's seed is missing. Amen. In order to raise a Patterson, we're going to get the fathers and sons together. 
I really are determined for women to intercede for men, intercede for fathers, intercede for the uncle. You find men around, pray for them because they are a dying breed. Listen, y'all. Amen. We pay the most. We, uh, we as the black seed pay most of the salaries of the county. Especially when we make up most of the population. Give me somebody. Uh, African Americans and Latinos and Hispanic, we make up 66% of that populace. That's why true ministry is prison reentry. You see the amen, somebody. And, and you wonder why your Goliaths and your giants still exist? Because the Davids are locked up in jail. Amen. And this season, you don't need a Saul, you need a David. Amen, somebody. And so when David went to fight Goliath, Saul said, Put my arm around. <laughs> David said, I'm sorry, we're not in that dispensation. Amen, somebody. We need this armor today. Uh, know what season you're in. That's important to understand that. You may try to use an old armor for a new battle. And sometimes you got to change your armor based on what the present battle is. And the reason why Saul wanted David to put on his armor so folks would think it was Saul that was fighting him. <laughs> I'm going to try it again <laughs> Saul still trying to control Still trying to manipulate So if David is in his armor They think Saul is fighting the giant David said I'm sorry I, I can't wear that armor Watch this He disobeyed authority respectfully No one deserves 100% obedience besides God I'm going to try one more time No one deserves 100% obedience besides God so there is a respectful way to disobey. Amen. So King Saul was asked him to put his armor on David. I'm sorry, Dad. I can't wear that. I'm not used to that. I got to go back to where I'm used to. Uh, find me where the Passaic River is. Amen, somebody. So I cannot uh, take five stones out the water. Because one for Goliath, one for his brother Nunu and Cuckoo and all of them. Amen. I got five rocks for all four of them, all five of them. He was prepared to use the equipment that he was used to using. And so you'll be surprised that the answer to the generation is behind closed doors or behind bars. Amen, somebody. And that's why the ministry of the day is how much you're ministering to the prison population and where your deacons are. They're behind jail. Trust me. They're behind bars. And so we can't run from our sons and daughters because if the truth be told, many of our sons and daughters right in this room are behind bars. If the truth be told. Amen, somebody. And if the truth really be told, some of us belong behind bars. Amen, somebody. And God graced us to be forgiven. Amen. Amen. But I want to talk about uh, how to kill a giant. And David had killing giant skills. Mm -hmm. He was able to train himself to knock out giants. And the question is, what trained him to handle a nine-foot giant? It was his ability to worship God when no one was looking at him. Some folks only perform and don't minister. Right. You're only a, an, an office because people clap for you because they see you. But when you really do ministry, you worship God when no one's looking at you. You're faithful when no one's giving any money or you're not getting a trophy, you're not getting a certificate. You're doing it because this is what God designed you to do. And this is what ministry really is. It's not because you're getting the kudos, you're getting the glory of God because you're doing what God told you to do. So David, Sister Cole, was able to worship uh, God outside when no one's looking at him. David was the eighth son of Jesse. Which means, according to some Hebrew scholars, he, he had a woman on the side and, and gave birth to David while he was in sin. That's why David said, I was conceived what? In sin. And so when they asked to bring his sons to the ball, sound like Cinderella, amen, somebody, to the ball, amen, uh, we're going to pick the new king. And they didn't include David in the number. And so Ms. Redfro, they was putting the oil, the oil does not even break, and they're sitting there looking at who or who's the next king. And this is what the prophet said. And watch this, y'all, because you'll be shocked who God will use. He said, is there anyone else? <laughs> and Jesse said, yeah, but I know you're not talking about David. Oh, yeah. Go get him. And look what he says. Remain standing when he get here. Now, I want to show you how church folk are. Oh, church folk, man. Church folk didn't expect him to be the king. They wanted the oldest brother as king. That's why his older brother got in his case when he came out there to fight Goliath. Go back and take him little old sheep. Because he was jealous that David was anointed king over him. And watch how deep this is. When David was anointed king, he don't take the king position to over 27 years later. He goes back and become a servant to Jesse and Saul before he takes position. Anyone that takes position before presence is dangerous. In order to come in a promotion camp of God, there's a humbling. There's a stripping. 
there's an exposing. I'm listening, y'all. Listen, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a taking down before God brings you up. If you really want David's killing anointing, you got to look at what David went through. David was, uh, was uh, hated by his brothers because they wanted what he had. And some of y'all are in trouble today because people want to be you. All right. Amen, somebody. They want your shape. They want your color. They want your voice. They want your legs. Amen, somebody. They want They think that two of you is needed. <laughs> you only need one. Amen. Don't be coming in my aid trying to be like someone else. So David was just who he was. And he spent time on the backside of the desert worshiping God by himself. Taking care of sheep and throwing rocks. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. As I lift my voice to worship. He outside doing all of this. No one's looking. No one's paying attention. All by himself. Driving your car worshiping God. Walking to school worshiping God. Catching a taxi. When you're not looking, I'm still worshiping God. Hallelujah. This is how you know you're in a love relationship because it's you and God. When people find they got to be someone else, they have not fallen in love with the president they're chasing position. Say they kill a giant. Come on, say they kill a giant. Now I'm going to help you out because some of you can stop people being killed today. You can stop them. In the spirit, you can stop them. But you got to open your mouth and talk to them. And the spirits listen to words. Now, some of us... Uh, Get dressed uh, too late. <laughs> Reverend Marcus told me the other day he saw someone walk broken down the street with no clothes on. They had no clothes on. He saw, and him, him and his kids got on minister, and some lady was walking by and took clothes on and dressed them. I swear that's, and that's some dang connection right there. But he had no clothes on. Amen. So it's almost like uh, preparing for winter, but no coat and no pants. So how do we do that? The same as the church. How do we get dressed doing evil? All right. All right. How do you get dressed doing evil? You're supposed to get dressed before the day of evil. So while good times are here, you're supposed to put on the whole armor of God. While things are okay, you're supposed to worship. While things are okay, you're supposed to tithe and sow seed. While things are okay, you're supposed to stay consistent with God. So when trouble comes, you already got it in your bank account. Jesus says, put on the armor of God before the day of trouble. So when, so when trouble comes, you can pull the rock out. You can pull the sword out. Hallelujah. Church won't, church won't make me laugh because uh, they always got the word out too much. I'm sure the difference between the word out and the word in. Sister Val, you know, I go to uh, Dunkin' Donuts on Route 20 on 33rd Street. My good friend was killed in a car accident. They own him. You know, Brother Joe, nicest guy in the world. Uh, nice guy. When I heard he got killed. It took me for a loop. That threw me, hurt me real bad. I just talked like a couple of days ahead. And uh, Dunkin' Donuts on that site was kind of a dangerous site because you can stick the store up and hit through 20 and take off, which is a very dangerous spot. So you try to rob a Dunkin' Donuts, it'll be a spot to do it. You hit the them, hit the highway, psh, take off. And so I was thinking about this. If I had a gun in my hand and I came into Dunkin' Donuts, I had the gun in my hand and I would have the gun and I'd say, uh, do me a favor, give me two glazed donuts and give me a, a cup of coffee, uh, two sugars, whole cream, you know. While I got the gun in my hand, that's very offensive. Because in your mind, you think I'm sticking you up. Are, are you with me so far? So in order to take away the threat, I gotta put the gun away and to have a normal conversation. Church folks always quoting scriptures at the wrong time. See, 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 it's like you coming into a place with a sword out here. That's why it's called the sword of the spirit. You put the sword in the sheath. And you only pull the sword out when it's time to stab or it's time to block. I'll try it again. When it's time to stab or it's time to block. We got the word out all the time. Everything's quoting the word all the time. And sometimes we have not established a relationship with people. Sometimes we say stuff like, how are you doing today? How's your family? Yeah. Amen. What you did last night? See, we don't, we don't, we don't establish a relationship. We're always quoting scriptures. Come on. I'm scared for who don't hold, hold out the Bible, but everybody hate them. Because what you want is relationship. You want to be able to hold conversation with people who can connect with you, and through the connectivity, you can save lives. 
So there's a time to pull the scripture out. Watch this. There's a time to pull the rock out. See, David knew when to threw that rock. You got to know when to be spiritual and deep. And you got to know when just to be you. And we're not trained how to do this. And this is why our ministries have not been impactful. Come on, say to somebody. I was with one of my teachers at my school, and he told me he had trouble sleeping. He had sleep apnea. That's how you said sleep apnea. And I told him, I said, listen, I, I go to Dr. Rufo. Ford. It's called the snore doctor. Ain't missing missing money? And I got insurance. Ain't missing money? So, so he went and he built this little thing for my mouth, and it's got the little machine on it. That's the one that you, that you put the little thing that you, that you, you know, that you had, the, big, the big machine don't look very attractive. <laughs> so I rub, I rub, have a little small thing to go in your mouth to keep, keep your mouth open at the air in you know, it cost you about $6,000 in insurance. $6,000, they paid for that. And I told him, go get that machine. And so he went and got, he said, he said, man, this thing works. I feel much better. And when he said it, then I said, I said, praise the Lord. That's what I said. I said, praise the Lord. And the guy looked at me and said, he said, huh? Did you can praise God for that? I said, yeah. He looked at me white. He said, he said, well, he said, well praise the Lord. <laughs> so I was like, and God said, you took the sword out and you stabbed him. See, that was applying the word at the time it needed to be applied. Right. See, when you're deep and spiritual and spooky, folk avoid you. Yes. But if you can connect at some level, they'll open up to you and say, embrace me. And that's, that's very powerful. David was extraordinary because uh, when the time came from the come on the scene, he was in a place of serving. See, this is the hour where God will promote you based on your prior servant attitude. So if you serve, God positions you for promotion. And if you don't put the time in, you'll get no harvest. Right. And let me give some of y'all a warning. And, and, I'm, and I'm talking to everybody behind everybody in the street, not right in the room. Uh, if, you, if you was like a hell child of your mother and father, you might get that same fruit from your kids. Right? Because, because fruit do follow you. Amen. And the Bible says, honor your mother and father that you might live long on the planet Earth. So honoring your parents is a big deal to God, a very big deal to God. And David honored Jesse, even though Jesse tried to ignore David. That's called the agape love of God. It doesn't matter what you think of me. I sound like Pastor Dar Senior. But it does matter when I think of you. Oh, God. That's some bad God. That's some bad God. Wisdom right there, right, Miss River? That, that is some wisdom right there. And I said, wow. And this is how David approached giants before giants became a part of his life. It is what you do prior before the giants come that give you the peace and the confidence. And so I, so I, so I look at this story. I said, boy, this is great. So look at 1 Samuel 17. So the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle. Reverend Marcus, read. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together in Shechem, which belonged to Judah, and pitched between Shechem and Azra and Estadim. All right, verse 2, River Marcus, go. So when the Israelites came together, camped at an oak valley, and spread out their troops in battle readiness for the Philistines. The Philistines were on one hill, the Israelites on the opposing hill, with the valley between them. Mm. A giant nearly 10 feet tall. Woo! Someone out. say 10 feet tall. 10 feet tall. Go ahead. Step out from the Philistines, lying into the open, Goliath from Gath. <laughs> he had a bronze helmet and his head was dressed in armor, Jeez. 126 pounds of it. Lord have mercy. Go ahead. He wore bronze shin guards and carried a bronze sword. His spear was like a fence rail. The spear tip alone weighed over 15 pounds. Jeez. His shield barrier walked ahead of him. Mm. Goliath stood and called, called out to the Israelite troops, <clears throat> why bother using your whole army? Am I not Philistine enough for you? And you're all committed to Saul, aren't you? Now, when you see the term service of Saul, that's church membership. <laughs> it's who you join to. Yes, yes. You have to understand that. You're service of Saul, servants of T.D. Jakes, servants of Winning the Bottom, servants of Pastor Guard Jr., servants of Pastor Devil. Whoever you're joined to is who your pastor is. And so the nature of your pastor flows through the body. And so when you see the membership, you see the king. This, this is deep. So Goliath says, Saul, that's the, that's the best you got? Pick out someone who will fight me. This is what they did back in Easter time. They didn't waste a whole lot of bloodshed. So if I beat you, you serve us. You pick your best guy. And so this guy comes from out the back. <laughs> right? About 10 feet tall. And all David brothers, they all wanted to be the king. Their knees knocking like they are um, the little rascals. And they're, they're, they're looking at them. Completely immobilized by fear. 
Now watch how deep this is. Goliath ain't did nothing but just talk. But his personification was intimidating. Come on. Mm-hmm. So they focused on the outside and forgot about the heart of the matter. Because mm. they was not equipped spiritually, they was equipped for position. Mm-hmm. And if you only look at the outside, then it intimidates you. Yeah. Uh, let me help you out. Uh, you got six months to live, that's outside. Mm-hmm. You got breast cancer, you're going to die. That's, that, that's outside. Mm-hmm. You never walk, that's outside. You never get a job, that's outside. You never get married, that's outside. Don't listen to that, that's outside. Don't look at the outside because the outside will intimidate you. Yeah. And whoever looked at the outside was moved by the outside equipment of the devil. Sometimes the devil ain't gonna do nothing, just start talking, whispering thoughts to you and give you, paint the words, picture you and that you'll never walk. You never do it. It's his job to talk you into fear. Fear got ears. I got big one. Fear got ears. F E A R, cover the F ear. So fear listens for your body movement, listens for what you're going to respond to, and it feeds off of fear like a dog does. I was watching a clip on one of the animal channels, and uh, you know, sometimes folk got a propensity to go out to these areas where animals are. I ain't seen black folk yet go out there looking for animals. <laughs> <laughs> White folks are always someplace they're not supposed to be, you know. Newsflash, some lion ate this man up. I said, well, where was he at in Zimbabwe? What you out there for? The lion had come in your kitchen? What you out there for? You in the, you, you in the wrong place? He, he ate him up? Well, that's what lions do. They eat people, you know. But on this clip, the lion, he, this guy had got close to the lion and was taking the picture like a, like a movie clip. And the lions, all right, it's true. I was watching, I said, oh, shoot. And the guy was talking to the camera. He said, he said, the lion is looking at us. <laughs> and Edie, I was saying, I know you're looking at you, but you, but you need to leave. You know? So he, he had the camera still looking, you know. He's getting closer. I said, man, that's right. What, are, what are you doing? You're tempting the lion. What, why are you there? Move. And then the lion looked and started to charge them. But watch this. He said, stop it. And the lion stopped and took off with the other way. And God said, that's how you do a devil. See? Right. See, he intimidates until you speak back to him. See, you won't, you won't. Now, this, this is an unusual example, but I'm they're very unusual. But, but I showed something in this clip is that the man said, move. And the lion didn't. This lion didn't do it. <laughs> right, right. Another one with a different story. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Kumba would have did it. What is his name? Simba. Simba would have did it. We ate him up in pieces. But this one says, "Stop it!" And the lion turned off and ran. And God says that the devil cannot devour everyone. It says that he seeks whom he may devour. And if seek is the word seek, it means to search. Which means there's some saints he can eat alive and some he can't. And my question is, which one are you? Amen. I was watching the, the Animal Channel, uh, Sister Pickett, and uh, and, and they, they left these cameras on, my man, uh, Mr. Hannah. They left these cameras on at night to see the behavior of lions, right? And left them all at night, and they watch how lions pray. Now, the male lion don't really do the hunting. The wives, the hunting, amen. They like they like window shopping. Why? Wow, <laughs> the lioness, they find like bushes, right? This what they this, I studied this whole thing how a devil operate. They hide behind the bush. They hide behind the bush. They hide behind the bush. They right? And so, and them little those little bulls go by. And little those little antelopes go by, right? And what the and what they're waiting for is the poor little thing. <laughs> mommy, mommy! That lion said, oh, I got your mommy for you. I got your mommy for you. And that lion zeroes in on the weakest prey of the one that's left behind. And they have no mercy. They'll snatch a leg in a minute and walk off with the, with the thing in the mouth like it's like normal. And the, and the, ma- and the male and the animal that lost their child be making noise. Ah, they steady eating. <laughs> You'd be surprised who the devil cannot stop. Is that that's that person that knows that they're victorious. 
is that person that knows that no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. It's that person that knows the greater one is inside of me. So when the devil looks at you, he thinks twice because you know you're going to take Jesus' name out and whip him good. But if you're scared, you don't want to try it, you, you got to be bold, man. You got to let the devil know you mean business. Patterson, there was a black lady kidnapped. Yes. And I heard it was two more. This is, I just heard. Yes. I, just, I heard it was two more. And I talked to the posts that Sister Val was talking about protecting our city. And, uh, and after a while, I got like 15 posts of the same article. Mm-hmm. Then I got 20 posts from the, the same article. Watch out for the black car. Watch out for the red car. Watch out for the black car. Watch out for the red car. Watch out for this person. Watch out for that person. And I kept reading. I kept reading. I said, God, they made me afraid of all cars. I said, yeah. I'm looking like, ooh, that's a red car. That's a red car. That's, God said, I'm not giving the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Then they took the picture of a black brother, put his face on it. So I had to say, now I hope this is true. That's why I use the term allege, allege on my page, because you can get sued for that. So I use this. If this is the guy, allegedly, he's snatching folk and throwing folks in cars. So I said, let me, let me teach you how to kill a giant. Common sense says to avoid evil at all costs. Walk down light streets, walk with people. But if it comes a time where you're trapped and you can't do nothing, and you're trapped by a car and the guy got a gun, you just do this. Come out in Jesus' name. Yes. I rebuke you. Put that gun down. Get your brother. Get him. I dare you. Get your. See, see, when you talk like that, they be scared. They be, they be afraid of the law. Yes. Yes. See, this is the authority that David walked in. People who only stick to Saul are fearful. Yes. People that stick with David find rocks and knock giants out. See, it's your mentality. It's what you believe. Yeah. I'll never do that. Of course you won't, because you said you'd never do it. You've got to be fully persuaded that what God gave you, you will do it. See, the Bible says faith is to be fully persuaded. That means be so persuaded, you can do this. See, that's what faith means. But we got more faith in doctor's reports. We have more faith in what's on TV than what God says. Very important to stand this, man. A lot of times, life and death is not really in the power of God or of the devil. It's the power of the choice of the individual that's in that bed. That's why comatose victims can still hear you talk. And here's the dangerous thing about heaven. Because if you see it, you don't want to come back. <laughs> Paul says to remain in this body is needful to the body of Christ. So I'm going to remain. But I could depart and go to heaven, which is far better. That's why some folk who don't really have a, a will to stay here, it's easy to go on the other side. Yeah. See, ministry got to be in this side stronger than your ability to go look for heaven because there's still more to be done. But if the pull to heaven is stronger, you'll let go of the comatose and talk up, take off on the other side. So sometimes when I pray for sick people, I talk to them. I say, now listen. I say, stay away from the light. Stay away from the light. <laughs> Don't go towards the light. Don't go there. Listen, you got more stuff to do. You got more stuff to do. Do this. And when you start doing that, you talk folks out of their unbelief. Yeah. Very important to understand that. Yeah. Training and coaching folks to receive healing is more so versus asking, begging God to do something. Yeah. It could be on the receptive end versus the aggressive end. Are you with me today? Yeah. Are you with me today? Yeah. Say, I have to learn, have to learn. How, to how to kill a giant. Now, when you use the term kill in the Old Testament, it is a physical thing. When you use the term kill in the New Testament, it's a spiritual weapon of being cast out. When the Bible says mortify the deeds of the body, he's not talking about committing suicide. He's, he's talking about mortify the deeds that come through you and kill it, bring it to an end. And David is an example of someone who's trained to kill a giant before it shows up. Now, a giant is symbolic of a principality. Are you with me today? Say a giant. Is symbolic, is symbolic of, of principality. principality. Now watch this. I'm going to show you this. And watch this. Principality, mm-hmm. power, mm-hmm. rulers, mm-hmm. spiritual wickedness. Mm-hmm. Can I try it again? Principalities, mm-hmm. powers, mm-hmm. rulers, mm-hmm. spiritual wickedness in high places, and then demons on, demons on the earthly realm. So you got five levels. Principalities, mm-hmm. powers, rulers, Spiritual wickedness in high places and demons on the planet Earth. That's the five steps. That's Ephesians chapter six. And when Christ came out the grave and arose, the Bible says he spoiled principalities and powers. Rulers not mentioned. Spiritual wickedness not mentioned, and demons not mentioned. 
the prince powers and powers. Because prince means where the rule begins. Powers means the end just being exposed. So when Christ came out of the grave, he spoiled him. Now keep this in mind what spoil means. Let me show you spoil. Just deep, just deep, just deep. Just deep. Right. Uh, when I was growing up, my mother, we had this thing at our house called the milkman. And you know how old I am, the milkman. And you see these guys that come into your back, don't remember the milkman, get the lead, remember, 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 five hours from those bottles, remember? There's always some white guy in a white truck out front, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and the milk back then was much different today because I, we could leave the milk outside on the table and it was still milk when you come back home. I, I don't know what kind of milk today it is because you leave it outside for five minutes, it's already spoiled, you know? Spoiled means to be reduced from its original level. Which means it was created to operate like this. When you spoil it, you drop it down here. So when it said he spoiled Prince Master of Powers, you don't have the power you used to have. It's been deduced, it's been reduced, so you can handle it. So God don't annihilate devils, he just reduce them. So the game can be played. There's no game without offense and defense. So if there's no opponent, what victory do you have? Uh, Pastor, I can score a touchdown any time I want. I can score a touchdown. Just do me a favor. Take all those players off the field. You know, remove the defensive team. Give me the ball and I'll score a touchdown every single time. Of course, there's no opposition. What rule, what reign, what reward if you have no opposition? You talked about this today. Where's the struggle at? Show me the struggle. History is made by how you overcome the struggle. Anyone can celebrate with no opposition. I'm great. You ain't been over there. I'm an overcomer. What you overcame? Got to heal it. You know what I'm saying? You got to heal it. You got to experience something. Yes. Pastor God Senior Sir told me this testimony. I don't know how many remember this testimony. And that's when he first started having the heart issues. He remember he was in the hospital. I remember the story he preached. And he said he, can, he was in the hospital room and he felt his heart going fast. And he felt a heart attack coming in the hospital room. He began to pray to Jesus. And some lady came in the room mopping. And she started whistling, Amazing Grace. Mm -hmm. she, she was just whistling. And as she was whistling, the heart just calmed down. Mm -hmm. She didn't scream Jesus' name. She just took the sword out and whistled for him, whistling. And the heart calmed down. God sent a message at the time it needed to be sent. When you start worshiping God, God will send someone at the right time. God wants you to be a giant killer. Stop telling me how big the giant is and how heavy the helmet is and how he did this. I'm tired of talking about what the devil done did. I need some giant killers. I need somebody that knows how to rise up and say, the greater one is inside of me. I know I got power over the enemy, power over sickness, power over disease. Talk, sir, talk. Got to open your mouth. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory. You know, I, I got a criminal record. I do drive bys. I drive by people's houses and pray for them. I've been doing this for 15 years. If you ever look out your window and see a car go around your house three times, that's me praying for you. <laughs> I've learned to defeat my enemies without them even know I'm praying for them. Let me tell you, you clean your community. Get in your car and start driving around people's houses. Yes. And just speak the word for an hour. Do it 60 minutes a day. Let me tell me do. I've been doing it here all for years. Just drive around praying. This, this is how you defeat the devil before he rise up. You start praying before you get there. Do it over your kids' schools. Listen. Yes. Do it over your house before they try to break in. Let me share testimony. I'm going to make it I mean, I'm going to clear not to use names to change the innocent because I got brothers. But one of our brothers' house, I'm going to call his name Rodona. <laughs> they tried, someone tried to break in his house from the back door. It did not get in. You know why? Because earlier that week, I went around the house and told the devil, don't you break in here. I told him what to do. Cancer, don't you come in this body. I, I know you killed my grandmama, but you're not touching my mommy. Get. See, we only do that after folks get diagnosed. You got to talk to it before it forms. You got to open your mouth. You got to tell the giant, no, I tell you. Shut your butt. What you got to do? Do you know what, you know what a demon is doing? They're 
jumping in bodies, yes. shooting up schools, yes. and then kill themselves. Yes. Which even the cops don't have the satisfaction of shooting. They take, they take the joy out of it. They're going to shoot everybody and then kill themselves. Yes. At least the cop wants the satisfaction of killing them. Yes. But they take that joy out too. Yes. So this is a pattern. Yes. So I see it in Columbine. I see it in Connecticut. I said, wow, it's, it's, it's getting close. Yes. Yes. I said, wait a minute. My daughter goes to Rosa Parks. Okay, so let me start driving in front of that school. Yeah. Let me shut devil down for you. I saw I got in front of Rosa Parks, 12 o'clock at night, and stood in front of the school. I said, uh, devil, that's how I talk. I know you think I'm crazy. This is how I, do. I said, devil, there's a, other schools outside of New Jersey. Uh, you can't touch this one. Now, I know you're a devil, and we know you're going to possess somebody someplace, but not here in my city. And so you got to go. See, this is how you got to talk. You got to talk. Stop making God do everything. If God did everything, there would be trouble in the earth now. Yeah. That's right. The problem is God gave authority to man. Amen. And you know when you give responsibility to people, you know what that means. Uh-huh. Yeah, it can get done. <laughs> come, on, come on, be honest. The most dangerous statement God made was this statement here. Let them have dominion. Amen. Now, now uh, uh, let's make man in his image after his likeness. And the devil did this. This looking image, likeness. Then when he said, let them have dominion, the devil said, ah, oh, that's the one I want. Yeah. Because I can't beat God, but I can beat his kids. Listen, listen. Come on, make I'm trying to show you this, y'all. How many ever watched Three Stooges? What was the name? Curly, Moe, and Larry? Right? And I'm making it funny, but I'm trying to make a point here. So the head guy, which was, who was it, Mo? The head guy? Who was it? Larry? Mo, right? Mo, right? Mom Collins on Mom, Mom Collins on every movie, amen? So Mo, Larry, and Curly, right? So when Larry. Wanted, when, when, when Mo wanted to slap Curly, he could get the Curly, so he would, he would poke uh, Larry and I, so you poke him, you know what I'm saying? So I can't get to him, so I poke you and you poke him. That's what the devil do. He know he can't hit God, so he hit the closest thing to God, which is his men and women of God. So when he comes to you, you got to know how to defend yourself. You got to know how to put up spiritual weaponry to destroy the enemy. And this is some of the stuff I'm teaching you because this is what David did. He defeated the giant before he met the giant. Yes. Look someone in the face next to you. I, I prophesy to you. Come on, y'all. Look at, look at your neighbor. Say, I prophesy to you. I you. To every giant every that's trying to come against you, I, I knock his block off. I knock his block off. The power, right? Power. You, better, you, better, you better learn. I'm trying to keep it. You better learn this, man. Amen. You mean, I'm, I'm trying to, this is a strategy the church got to start doing. You got to get out your senior citizen house yeah. with your cane and walk around the block. Say, devil, you can't come in this building. Yeah. Leave Sister Ann alone. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Go find somebody else. Oh, no. You can't touch my husband. No, no, no. no. I got to go. Gotta. And the devil listen to you when you open your mouth. Thank you. All right, he got there. You'll flee. And I'm glad you said that because the scripture says, draw nigh to God. God will draw nigh to you. Watch this. Resist the devil and he will flee. And the Amplified Bible, it means run as in terror. And the power is not in the resistant part. The power is how close you draw nigh to God. So your prayer life is you bring you close to God. So when the devil hears your voice, he says, that guy's voice, I got to listen to. See, see, that's key. One of the persons in the book of Acts says, Paul I know. Jesus I know. But who are you? And the demon jumped on the man and beat him off until his clothes came off. So you don't want to be imitating. You want to know God for yourself. So when you sing... You sing with authority. When you cast out devils, you cast out with authority. And when the devil attacks your family, he knows he's got to struggle with you because you are the interceder for the covering one. See, some of y'all are in trouble because you're the last one, you're the last man standing. Did you hear what I just said? Some of y'all are in trouble because you're the only one in the house that know what to do. So you're taking the blow for everybody. Because if the devil can get you out the way, he can take the whole family. At about 11 o'clock last night, my wife got a phone call and says, Micaiah was in a car accident. 
Now we ain't really, really party, you know. <laughs> we can really freak down. Take back now, now. <laughs> so when Jamie put a face like that, we know she in trouble. I said, what's going on? You can't, she runs out the room, the music is playing, go upstairs. Well, where, where, where did Axel and I? I said, oh, Axel, oh, God. But when she did that, I, I started yawning. I said, hmm. I said, what is that? Because I already saw it before it happened. And I stopped it before it came. Listen, this, this is deep. So I got outside, I said, listen, I said, I got on the phone, I said, Kai, she said, Dad, we okay? Uh, the couple was arguing in the car, he didn't see the stop sign, ran through, hit the car, and uh, we okay? And I said, you sure you're okay? He said, yeah, I'm okay. I said, you sure you're okay? He said, well, my back, I said, well, your back hurt, let's, let's get you to the hospital. If there's anything wrong with your back, let's, let's make sure we make that report. Let's not miss anything here, let's be, let's, 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 let's cover all the bases. <laughs> we get to the hospital, my daughter's there, her friends, and of course God protected the car had made the damage to it. It was shook up pretty bad, the girls was crying, but God protected it. And here's the point is I killed the giant before it came. It doesn't mean all evil stop, but it's been reduced so you can handle it. And what you want. Is another day to live. See that, that 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 that's the key. You might lose a car, you might lose a house, or lose clothes, but you don't. But you don't need to lose yourself. I can handle everything else. Just give me another day to breathe. Oh, I, can, I can handle losing a house. Right? Just give me another Monday or another Tuesday. I can handle it. Just let me know this to breathe. Hey, Marcus, what did Paul say? What happened? Keep going. Almost done. So pick your best fighter and pit him against me. Uh -huh. If he gets the upper hand and kills me, the Philistines will all become your slaves. Yes, go ahead. But if I get the upper hand and kill him, uh -huh. you'll become our slaves and serve us. Go ahead. I challenge the troops of Israel this day. Give me a man. Let us fight it out together. Go ahead. When Saul and his troops heard the Philistines' challenge, they were terrified and all <laughs> lost hope. <laughs> this is the king. The king! Look, the king is here! King Saul is here! Come on, king! Kill that giant! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Sound like some pastors I know. <laughs> Come on out! Cast the devil out them street gangs! Come get involved in the school. Talk to some of the rebellious kids. Not me. Oh. We, we, we act like King Saul. Yeah. Yeah. Scared. Scared of business. Yeah. Scared of leading business. Scared of getting involved. Scared, scared, scared. And you wonder why the world messed up. We got to do it. Devil got to do it. Lazy leadership. Yeah. We don't want to get involved except it's churchy. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> One of the churches, he said, Pastor Mike, I'm moving. I said, why are you moving? Because my neighbor got so bad. Watch this. Watch this. She said, she's talking to me though, right? She said, I'm moving because the neighbor got so bad. So I said, okay. I said, so where you live at? I live in the street here. What's across the street? Some person, they on drugs. I said, okay. What's next door? They be stealing stuff. I said, what's on the other side? Oh, they doing numbers. I said, what's behind you? Oh, they folk never go to school. So I said, have you went outside and, and met any of these people? Nah. Did you uh, talk about Jesus? Nah. Did you knock on the door and see when I, they can eat dinner with you? Nah. I avoid them because I'm going to see Jesus. <laughs> see that mindset? So I'm going to take my salt, take my light, and keep it to myself. If you live on your block and no one know you live there, that's a problem. If you live in a neighborhood and you don't matter, trust me, you don't matter. Now, I'm not talking about making an attempt and trying and it don't work. I'm talking about folk who don't even try. They don't even know you. You don't even minister. That's not how life is, man. One guy said, I want God to save my neighbor. <laughs> save my neighbor. God save my neighbor. Right. And God said, this is how you're going to save them. He said, I want you to go in your garage. I want you to take out your red motorcycle that you paid $8,000 for. Your next door neighbor has no way to get to work. 
Now, he got a motorcycle license. He just don't have a motorcycle. And he can't get one. But you got one you don't even use because you have a car. So in order for you to kill a giant, I want you to take your red motorcycle, roll it next door, and give him your motorcycle. He said, the devil is a liar. <laughs> the devil is a liar. God said, the God said, God said, I'm not, I'm not the devil. I'm not the devil. Just give him the motorcycle. So he getting he 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 start the motorcycle. He said, God, the motorcycle now start. God said, fix the motorcycle, make it work. I'm taking the motorcycle. He had to get it fixed, tuned. Guys, as a matter of fact, get a new paint job for it. Make it look good. See how sound the garage painting it, the attitude, because God told him to get the motorcycle wet, right? Now. Got it all done, new chrome tie, new chrome wheel, everything. He got to roll the motorcycle next door. He rang the doorbell real light, just in case they don't hear it. <laughs> it's on that doorbell. He had a guy open the door up. He said, yes. He said, I'm, I was, uh, I'm, he said, hey, what's up, Harry? Why are, you, why are you on my porch? He said, well, you know, I'm a Christian. And I know you're an atheist. You don't believe in God. But God told me to get up and bless you. He said, well, what did God tell you? <laughs> no, Mr. Atheist, what did God tell you to do? <laughs> he told me to, for me to give you my motorcycle. He said, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> he said, here's the keys, full tank of gas. The guy said, you know what? He said, he said, I was trying to run the homily back and forth to work, and I really appreciate it because I, I, now I see how I can do it. And so he takes the guy, red motorcycle, takes it, puts it in the garage, and starts driving it to work. Up and down the road. Every time he sees you, wait to him. The guy says, praise the Lord. <laughs> Smoke out of his ears because he mad and gave that motorcycle up. He rode that motorcycle every day back and forth to work. Twelve months later, the guy comes and say, "What time your church service starts? I want to come with you to your church." He comes up, give his life to the Lord. He got saved because of the red motorcycle. That's how you kill a giant. You initiate. Loves action, even though you don't feel like it. So this is how the kingdom works. Now give me 10 minutes. I mean, what time is it? What time? What time is it? It's 12 11. 12 right, I got a few minutes. All right. Can I get a few minutes? I'm almost done. All right. Pastor God said, make sure they're out before 1230. So I'm out before 1230. All right. All right. Here we go. I'm following orders. Amen. Go. Enter David. He was the son of Jesse the Ephraimite from Bethlehem and Judah. Jesse, the father of eight sons was himself too old to join Saul's army. Jesse's three oldest sons had followed Saul to war. The names of the three sons who had joined up with Saul were Elab, the firstborn. Who then, thought he should be the next king? He should be in charge? He should be the one? How old you look at me? How you pick David? How you pick David? Why you pick me? I can't believe you pick me. How you pick David? I can't believe you. David don't go to school. David got no military experience. How you pick David? See, that's what happened to the oldest son. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come on. He mad because God looked over him yes. and went to the son that was born to the chick on the side. Come on, thank you. Thank you. It's deep. It's not always behavior. Oh, it's the heart of a matter. Yes. Yes. Something in David turned God on. What's in your heart that turned God on? Yes. What made God go, ho, ho, ho. Angel sit us, angel sit us. Here come Michael, here come Michael, here come Michael. Sit up, here come Deacon Lord in there. Look at your hand. So I know that Jesus will fix it. You know what I'm saying? Here come Lord in there. See, 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 the thing is, something in you has to turn God on. Now I know God loves everybody. We know this scripture, but there's certain folk God like. Who God called his friend. David had an inner connection from his heart that made God favor him. Saul messed up and got fired. David messed up and had Solomon. <laughs> I'm trying to figure this thing out. Saul messed up and they, they get rid of him. David messed up and God he's a man of my own heart. I said, whoa, what, what kind of, what's the difference here? It's kind of like discriminatory here. He said, David likes me 
and likes my presence. He's in love with my being in my face. He's not interested in positions and power and money. He just wants to worship me. And that turns me on. And this is how you kill a giant. You got to turn God on. And the reason why our cities are full of giants and prince powers and powers is because we got church folks who love church stuff but not in love with Jesus. A deacon that don't date your wife. A trustee that don't date your husband. Sunday school teacher but hate people. Sit up straight, sit up straight. Amen, somebody. Choir members who get mad because they didn't sing your song. <laughs> I'm, I'm I, used, I used to go to these big, large crusade meetings. They used to stand in line for Benny Hinn. They'd be lined up uh-huh. to get in. And they would step on top of you. You'd be getting in front of their seat. Okay. I said, well, how could y'all like, step on top of me to get healed? <laughs> yeah. So you're going, step on That's my seat. That's my chair. That's my seat. I love you, Jesus. I said, what are you doing? You kicked me on the way in. That's why it's not about the, the position. It's about what's in your heart. That's why forgiveness opens the heart up. It doesn't mean you overlook the deed, but you release them because God released you. Now tell me 10 minutes. I'm going to be done in 10 minutes. Tell me 10 minutes. 10 minutes. I want to get this in. I really believe that the church is on the brink of revival in our nation. If she understands what true revival is, Amen. it's not just the saving of souls and the yes. altar calls. Yes, it's the restoration of Joseph to Jacob. Yes. It's the movement from Canaan to Goshen until the curse passes over and we turn back to Canaan. Yes. It's the time when people thought you was dead and gone. You came out the grave and you rose up differently than before. See, this is the hour when God going to raise up the unknowns. Yes. And when you least yes. expect, that's who God is going to use. That's the one you better watch out for. Them the folk you better be praying for. Yeah. All this stuff with bishop titles and apostleships and prophets. And, if I hear another bishop conference, I'm going to slap somebody. Yeah. Do more bishop conferences, more prayer conference, more seminars. We've been, we've been seminared out. I know that's right. how, how, how does it take to feed somebody? How's it so hard? Because you want to cope. It's so hard to take someone out and talk to them. With it. It's not them. Just talk to people. That's ministry. Yeah. Take someone to the store. Yes. 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 Lady, want to go Christmas shop? You got a tank full of gas. It won't even go next door to take what's the name to the store. That's ministry. Come on. Pick Miss Need up and take her out shopping. Buy some shoes and a new coat. Yes. And praise God on the way back. Amen, somebody. Amen. That's yes. not ministry to church folk, though. Amen. This is ministry. Get folk in front. We all go. <laughs> Too old for that. <laughs> Got to touch lives. Got to touch lives. Let me get to my point. Go, David. Next, Abinadab and third, Shammah. David was the youngest son. While his three oldest brothers went to war with Saul, David went back and forth from attending to Saul to tending to his father's sheep in Bethlehem. Say, serving too. I'm giving you a giant killer. He's serving too. He's serving Jesse and he's serving Saul. Look at someone say, he got two jobs, man. <laughs> some was just lazy. Yeah. I'm financially broke. Well, get another job. I know folks who got four of them. We just, we, just, we, just make, we just talk the talk. Work. Create. Think. Be creative. Go, hurry. Each morning and evening for 40 days, Goliath took his stand and made his speech. He did this for 40 days. I am Goliath. Who can defeat me? I'm bigger than all of y'all. Pick your best fighter up. I knock him out. Show me Muhammad Ali. I'm Joe Frazier with a left hook. I know who I am. He did this for 40 days. And for all 40 days, all King saw and did was knock knees. As a matter of fact, you read the story, this was really what happened. They were fighting the valley. And then when Goliath would step out, they'd take off and run down with the rest of They took off. They fight the little guy with Goliath come in. They take, they take off and run. Right? Now this is just this sets the tone for this cocky young guy named David to show up. Now let me tell you, if you're gonna create this scene, the scene of this man, his brothers already don't like him. Because he was anointed king while he was picking up sheep doo-doo. Listen, and they had on their uniforms and stuff, and the prophet looked over all of them and chose him and then said, don't sit down till he come in. Uh-huh. All rise. That's called the judge. He walks in, and he walks in. David's outside 
you know, sure. dirty, stinking. He said, what's up with your wife? And the oil said, poof. He said, that's your king. And the prophet picked up his black bag with his, his little Bible slid in there. <laughs> Took off the leather. <laughs> and I had David standing there with his brother looking. I'm like, dude. Can't be him. Watch this. Can't be her. Can't be him. Can't be her. Can't be the Leroy. It might be. You never know. Be very careful who you think what well, can't be. <laughs> and they left that boy, 16 years old, with all his bubble with their teeth. Can't stand you. Because church folk be doing that in Jesus' name. Can't stand you. In Jesus' name, can't stand you. We can't stand you. Don't like you. <laughs> I'm not telling you. Church folk are the worst, man. Because they're coding scriptures doing it too, boy. They're coding scriptures. <laughs> be hating you with coding scriptures. <laughs> Saul and his boy shaking, right? Now watch how David operates. He's going. One day Jesse told David, his son, take this sack of cracked wheat and these ten loaves of bread. Take McDonald's, go ahead. And run them down to your brothers in the camp. Because you're good at running because you chase all them sheep all the time. Go ahead. And take these ten wedges of cheese to the captain of their division. Sound like Patterson. Them cheese truck came, go. Check in on your brothers to see whether they are getting along all right. <laughs> Go check on your brothers. And let me know how they're doing. Oh, sure. Saul and your brothers and all the Israelites in their war with the Philistines in the Oak Valley. So, so between running and fighting, they're doing pretty good. Verse 20, go ahead. David was up at the crack of dawn. He rose at 5 o'clock in the morning. I like church folk who stand in bed to 12. Go ahead. Had right. arranged for someone to tend his flock. All right, he, he had delegation power. He delegated folk. He trained. Church folk only keeps up all their whole life. All right. Right. You're a true pastor. You raise up other pastors and leaders who take your place. Amen. Right. The faster you pass the time, the more you're able to free yourself to go around the world. Amen. Mm-hmm. That's what some folks die in the pulpit and never seen uh, Africa, Europe, or Miami, Florida because we died holding out to a time that yeah. guys had let go to someone else. Keep going took the food and was on his way just as Jesse had directed him. Just as his father told you. Do what your father told you to do. Go. He arrived at the camp just as the army was moving into battle formation. So David shows up while the fighting going up. Hoo, ha, ha, yeah, ha. And David show up with a bag of lunch. When they down, show up. David looking. <laughs> you know he like war. You know that brother? He like war, you know. <laughs> <laughs> The boy like to fight. <laughs> Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! That boy would look. He walk up. These folks fighting. They go hurry. Israel and the Philistines moved into position, facing each other, battling ready. Uh. David left his bundles of food in the care of a sentry, ran to the troops who were developed and deployed, and greeted his brothers. As he he was going to his brothers. He said, he, ran, he, he put the food aside, yeah. he runs to his brother. And this is his older brother. He trying to hold a conversation. He said, yo, what's going on? He all suit, what's going on? Now, that, now you know these brothers, they're kind of tired from running. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you see that big giant there? Like, and David all psyched. You know, he, he out there, he's not part of the army. He's not part of the team. He's not, he not in the army, Air Force, Marine, nothing. He's just a little shepherd boy bringing McDonald's to his brothers. Yeah. Yeah. That's That's you never forget, you never, you never, you'd be surprised who God will set you up with if you get moving. You get your butt out the house, get your butt out the church, and get involved with the community. You'd be shocked what God will bless you with. Yeah. Hurry, hurry, I got a little time left. Hurry. Yeah. While they were walking, while they were talking together, the Philistine champion, Goliath of Gath, stepped out from the front lines of the Philistines. Look, look. Yeah. So while they had a conversation, John said, I am Goliath. And David was like, oh. You got to see this, man. He not even thinking about Goliath. He just happened to be the right place at the right time. That's what kingdom does. It puts you in the right place at the right time. This is how you know what God answered in prayer. When you just know you're someplace you're not supposed to be. <laughs> and you just get blessed with just being there. So David is asking his brother, how y'all doing from all that running? How you doing? And while you're only conversating, the giant pops out and starts making a speech. Now look how the scripture says this. Hurry, go. Stepped out from the front lines of the Philistines and gave his usual challenge. <laughs> David heard him. Now, David did what? Look at someone say, guess what? Guess what? God has put you in a position. God has put you in a position. To hear a conversation. To hear a conversation. 
that's about to promote you. <laughs> Woo! You, you better give it like you said, y'all. Listen, you'll be in the boss's office and hear something and God about to promote you. You'll be in the food town market and some girl will say, I wish I had the babysitter. I would pay them. i do it. See, you're going to be the right person at the right time. God is preparing you to kill giants if we get you in the position by worshiping his presence. There's a change going on. God's putting you in a position you didn't think you're supposed to be in. <laughs> oh, this is crazy, man. <laughs> I remember one time I was in the backyard cookout. This is no lie. And I saw all my relatives there. We, we, we had a backyard cookout, barbecue and stuff, food, everything. And my Aunt Weaver was standing next to me. And I told God, I said, God, I sure would love to minister to my family. And Thomas said to my Weaver, said, Pastor Mike, would you like to say something? I said, oh, oh, it was too quick. It was too quick. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, ooh. I was talking to God one minute, and my aunt Reba said, Mike, would you like to say, I said, did you hear God tell you that? Oh, shoot. And I stood up and said, well, Jesus loves y'all. I was so blown away by how stuff shifted. Because kingdom works by righteousness, not by goodness. It's not the kingdom of goodness. It's the kingdom of righteousness. When good is not right, it's evil. Church folks are tricked by doing good stuff and it's not right stuff. You could be good at doing wrong and think it's right. So David is doing the right thing, feeding his brother, following authority, and over here is a conversation made by this giant. Now, now I want to show you. I got to begin to call my Bible. I can't stay with this. Go, Reverend Marcus, go. The Israelites, to a man, fell back the moment they saw the giant. Totally frightened. Say, so, say, so running. They running. Now, if they run, you know we ain't running. You know we don't run. They were standing there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, brother, zoom, zoom, zoom. Yeah. <laughs> and David, this is a cocky little boy, man. It's a teenager. This guy just standing there, like, why are you running? What's the problem? See, see what happens when you got a certain faith mindset. Right. What makes other folk run make you stand? Yeah. <laughs> What make other folks quit make you get stronger. See, I, see, I, see, I don't understand that song she played, Cool and Water. It's like water from Grandma's Well. That's, that's Lee Williams, y'all. That's the coolest singing gospel singer in the world. He be singing, he don't even move. Just like the water. Just like the water. In Grandma's Well. Like cool and water. Cool and water. Like cool and water. Cool in the water, just like grandma's well, huh? We be getting down and leave us. Cool in the water, cool in the water. Smooth. How smooth are you when the enemy's attacking? How smooth are you when the doctor say you got six months to live? You gotta open your eyes and say, devil, you about to come down. I'm about to take you out. You're not gonna stop me. I'll overcome you by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. I you. Yeah. 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 Five minutes, five minutes, time to five. Kathy, yeah. time to five minutes, five minutes. Go. Yeah. Five minutes, five minutes. Go. The talk among the troops was Have you ever seen anything like this? This man openly, defiantly challenging Israel? The man who kills the great giant Look. will have made it. Yeah. What, what, what? Be what? Go. The king will give him a huge reward. A huge reward? What kind of reward? Offer his daughter as a bride. Oh, you'll get a wife? Go. And give his entire family a free ride. That means no taxes. <laughs> you know you're about to kill a giant for a woman and no taxes. <laughs> I'm about to be free from the IRS. <laughs> that giant got to come down. <laughs> David and say, look, Goliath, when I throw this rock, you gotta fall, man. <laughs> because he said, I'm, not, I'm not gonna be paying taxes. I thought getting the woman was enough. When he added the tax part, I said, oh, oh man. <laughs> Just, cool and water. <laughs> cool and water. <laughs> Hurry up, <girl>. <laughs> <laughs> 
Right. David, who was talking to the men standing around him. Now watch, that, watch David's conversation go. Ask, what's in it for the man who kills that Philistine and gets rid of this ugly block on Israel's honor? Did you see this guy? This guy, this guy talk like he big smack. Go. Who does he think he is anyway? This uncircumcised Philistine taunting the army. Hello, my name is not Philistine. My name is Goliath. My name, I'm not calling you what you want to be called. Yes, right. Right. You're an uncircumcised Philistine. You got no contract. I'm not even going to let my faith pronounce it. Take your butt someplace. Yes. As I was saying, what are we going to get for killing this guy? We're going to get. He didn't even think about his words. He's talking about the reward system. See, when your faith is fully persuaded, you think on the other side of the positive, not the negative. That's right. You start to be saying, so, okay, so when God bring me out, I'm going to own this house. When God bring me out, I'm going to have this. When God bring me out, this is You're going to talk about the other side. Stop telling folks what you're in right now. We know what you're going through. Get through. God will never bring you to something unless you plan to bring you through something. That's less than three minutes. Go. They told him what everyone was saying about what the king would do for the man who killed the Philistine. Go ahead. He would have his brother. Watch it. This is the play-hating brother. This is the older one. He thought he going to be king, right? Watch his response. Praise the Lord, David. Thanks for coming out and bringing us hamburgers and hot dogs. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You can't. No, no. When church folk play hating, they, they find other reasons yeah, to blame yeah, for hating. Yeah. Look, at the, look at the language he used. Go watch this. His older brother heard David fraternizing with the men and lost his temper. Uh -huh. What are you doing here? Why aren't you minding your own business taking that scrawny flock of sheep? <laughs> see what I do? See, 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 they, they, don't, they, have, they can't tell you that they're jealous of you. That's it, that's it. They got to that's find it. something else to make it, make it like something wrong with you. Yeah. It's like I tell my church all the time, you can see someone walking on water and say, look at him. He can't even swim. <laughs> See, they never satisfy because they don't want to sit in the first place. So no matter what you do, you can never appease your enemies. So why are you looking for them to always to, what you call that term, affirm, you want them to affirm you? Is that the front word, affirm you? What do you really use when someone to affirm you, to confirm you? And sometimes your enemies don't want to confirm you because they look at you to fall in the first place. So stop looking for it. Just keep doing what God called you to do. Go. I know what you're up to. You've come down here to see the sights. Hoping for a ringside seat at a bloody battle. What is it with you? Replied David. This remix Bible, go. All I did was ask a question, ignoring his brother. He turned to someone else, asked the same question. So he took his brother, I'm listening to you. He said, ask him, and everybody gave him the same answer. Quickly, hurry. And got the same answer as before. Uh -huh. The things David was saying were picked up and reported to Saul. So Saul, get a hold of him. Hold, hold up, y'all. I'm coming in here. I'm talking about how to kill a giant. I'm going to show you this. In order. For you to kill the giant, you need to meet the king first. So when God begins to shift you in political office or political circles, he's preparing you to kill giants in your community. But if King Saul don't call you, your success is limited. So to avoid the political monster is not the smartest move. It's to get involved with it strategically. So when the king called, when the governor called, when the president called, I know they was mad at President Trump calling Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey was, I got to go, and he changed his mind and punked out. I kept saying, I hope President Trump here call me. <laughs> call me anytime. I said, I'll be right there. I got the salt, the light, and the oil. And listen, my, and by the time he finished, he'll be speaking in tongues with me when I walk out the room. Because that's the influence I have. I'm not punked by no political party. When God puts you in powerful places, he sits you next to Pharaoh, yeah. next to Harad, next to kings and, pr and princes so you can influence them. Come on, Daniel. Come on, Joseph. Come on, David. Come on, Solomon. It's all political leaders who influence nations. Yeah. Can't kill a giant. Let the king call you to the table because the king is going to give you permission to go on his behalf. Yeah. Go. The things David was saying were picked up and reported to Saul. Saul sent for him. Master, said David, don't uh -huh. give up hope. I'm ready to go and fight this Philistine. Uh -huh. Saul answered David, you can't go and fight this Philistine. You're too young and inexperienced. You're too little. You ain't got no college degree. You wear braids here. I'm sorry, that's my, that's, that's my story. I'm sorry. There's no way you can do that. There's no way possible. That can't be done. When folks say it can't be done, it means it can be done. What they really want to say is they can't do it. <laughs> that's what that really means. All right, go. And he's been at this fighting business since before you were born. Uh -huh. David said, I've been a shepherd tending to sheep for my father. Here we go. Whenever a lion or bear came and took a lamb from the flock, Look. I'd go after it, knock it down, and rescue the lamb. 
If it turn on me, I grab it by the throat, wring its neck, and kill it. Uh, Lion or bear, it made no difference. I killed it. Did y'all read the story? <laughs> Could you imagine that song on Sunday morning testimony? Could you imagine it being a testimony? No Give it out of the God who's ahead of my life. No. Filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the, 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 the warm, fiery fire. I want you to know that I'm a shepherd boy. And when the lion and wolf came and took my sheep, I chased him down. And I took that sheep out of his mouth. And when he rose up, I popped his neck. That's Jesus. Y'all pray for me. Keep the word spread in your heart. <laughs> See that? See how that works? That's how you kill a giant. You gotta be fully persuaded. You can't be moved. You gotta stay committed. Don't let other folks move you off your post and stay fixed because God will bless you. Yes. Lift your hands. Come here, give me Jesus' mind over here. I want that. Put your hand on your neighbor. Right on the shoulder. And you're going to command giants to be defeated in their lives. You got one minute and start commanding giants off their lives. And this is how you pray for people. When every giant is chasing you, bind it off your neighbor. Start, to, start praying now. Close your eyes, start talk out loud. Cast out devils and giants. Giants of sickness, giants of disease. This is the prayer I meet right now. This is it. Cancel giant attacks against accidents, against them. I want you to destroy it. Destroy it. Destroy those giants. Stop them. Shut them down. Sickness, disease, political manipulation. Shut it down against your mayor, against your city council. Shut it down. Cast it down in Jesus' name. Throw it down. Overthrow it. Destroy it. Would you pray for yourself? Pray for your neighbor. Pray for their children. Pray for the husband. Pray that God healed the husband. Come against Alzheimer. Come against brain disorder. Come against it. Command the blood, the blood to flow. Ask God to heal backs. Ask God to stretch out legs. Come on, y'all. Kill the giant. Kill it. Shut down prisons. Shut down powers over your city. Ask that kidnapping devil, leave your city. Put that girl back. Put that boy back. Speak. You got power in your mouth. Speak. Come on. 40 more seconds. Open your mouth. Speak with power. Speak with power. Pray for your pastor. Pray for Church of Love. Pray for Pastor Mike. Pray for Mighty Sons of God Church. Pray for Seco. Pray for the building. Pray, y'all. Pray, y'all. Bring the giant down. I am David. I'm knocking out giants. I am David. Talk. Come on. Talk. See, I believe that the power I have in my mouth and my heart, I can shut down devils. I shut devils down over my mind, over my brain, over my body, over my children, my nieces, my nephews. I prophesy into the atmosphere. Rescue Jesus. Rescue Jesus. Make it straight, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Rise up, David. Rise up, David. Every giant is defeated and brought down in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're doing it now. In Jesus' name. Come on, say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, bless him. Come on, bless him. Come on, bless him. Come on, come on, bless him. Come on, come on, y'all can do better than that. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, David. Come on, David. Come on, David. Come on. Come on. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I be. Oh, Jesus.
Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I be, oh Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Mine on and on. All day long, sing my song. Mine in the morning, mine in the evening. All day long, sing my song. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Come on. Morning in the morning. Morning in the evening. All day long. Sing my song. Morning in the morning. Morning in the evening. All day long. Sing. Come on. Look. Jesus is mine. It's truly mine. Jesus is mine. Everywhere. He's mine. He's mine. Yes, he's mine. He's mine. Yes, he's mine. He's mine. Yes, he's mine. He's mine. Oh, yes, he's mine. He's mine. Yes, he's mine. He's mine. Yes, he's mine. He's mine. Yes, he's mine. Come on, something about that name, something about that name, yeah. Something about that name, yeah. Something about that name, yeah. It's you, oh my God. It's you, oh my God. It's you. Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus.
Jesus. Oh, Jesus. For your daughters, that is your Goshen. That's your protection. Get up speaking it, get up saying it, and use that name anytime you have to use it. Closing announcements. Anybody closing announcements? Reverend Marcus for tomorrow night at 90 Delaware, because you just mentioned that about the college thing tomorrow. Oh, yes. Phil College is having a um, slash open house meeting that's going to be held at 90 Delaware, which is the Board of Education for the city of Patterson. And it starts at 6 a.m. We encourage you to come out. The I Am Initiative will be there. And we're just going to just hear and impart to see how we can continue to go about. It's not all just about adopting schools, but it's about changing lives and making relationships. Yeah. Amen. Hand clap for that tomorrow, 6 o'clock at 90 Delaware. You can come out and support your face in the building. We'll make a big deal. Amen. Yeah, and we need to give support to our political leaders in the community. Sister Val, Sister, of course, Kathy, and many of you in this room who are in political positions, we need to give you support. Also, who runs my J-Spot ministry, Elder Lisa. Uh, but the political circle is very powerful. We need to be influential at the time, showing our faces on the market. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Uh, anything else, Ms. Monroe? Anything else I'm missing? Go. Yes. Uh, we just want to say that we are so grateful Come on, come on. Hallelujah. A very powerful word. But I think we can feast on it. Every time Pastor Mike sees me, I always take him like a little boy, but not no disrespect to the pastor. No, it's okay. It's all right. Take that from him. He's a pastor. Right. Therefore, his people. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. But I like hearing preachers preach and use life stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. I can identify with yeah, yeah. So I'm so grateful. Mm -hmm. And when we have a speaker, you know you hold the plate, so us yeah, just right. come on with the plate. <laughs> yeah. 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 And uh, hey, community, don't forget, you know, uh, uh, Pastor Dave, you know, y'all know, I don't know, y'all know about that. Some things the secrets are our burden. When she yeah. wants to play there. But, uh, you know, the day is the third Sunday, right. so y'all do.